everybody. This is Pastor Scott. We got a special podcast for you this week. Uh, with me here is uh, Sheriff Beam. All you guys have recognized uh, Sheriff Bill Beam. Uh, he's been a friend of mine for the last, I'd say, about five years that I've really known him good. And uh, so we're going to do a podcast today. We're going to talk about jail ministry, and then we're going to hear some of his heart uh, about things that the Lord's done and different things. But the first thing I want to say is thank you for coming, because I know you're a very busy man, and uh, we appreciate you coming and giving us some time. The no first time that I met Sheriff Bean, uh, actually, I took some of my books up to the jail, and Charlie Green was there. And, Charlie. Uh, yeah, good, great man of God. And uh, Charlie introduced me to the sheriff, and they, they let me put some of my books in there. And uh, then some things progress from there. But uh, kind of where we're here today is that Sheriff Beam had called me last year around April and um, told me that he wanted to start a jail ministry. It asked me that I have some women that would come in. And so that's kind of got started everything going, snowballing to, to today. And uh, so I want, I want you to just talk to me just a minute about uh, what made you feel like that you wanted to to step up the game at the at the at the jail and get more people right. in and and what what is it that well, caused you to do that? We uh we've been having Sunday services and, and of course when COVID come along you know everything had to shut down but um there's a lot of people and and I'd get I'd get groups and 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 my own church and 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 places that would talk about you know we need to we need to help we need to help these people that, you know we have homeless in our community and we do. And uh, we've got people in other places and, and going out and 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 trying to minister to them out here in the woods and the, and the stuff. And, and as law enforcement officer, I said, that sometimes that's not a good idea. And the reason I don't think it's a good idea is because sometimes in some of these homeless camps, why are they in the homeless camp? Because their families won't have anything to do with them right now. They can't stay with their families, can't stay at home. Uh, they get drug tested if they go to the... Uh, Hesed house. The Hesed house. And so they, they can't pass a drug test. And so they're 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 out there in that situation for for a reason. Now, do they need to be administered to? Absolutely. But it might not be the best place in the world. Yeah. But if they stay in there long and they stay in that kind of life long, they're going to end up months. So. Mm -hmm. And when they do, then that is the time to me. It's the perfect time. You know, it takes a few days. They got to, and sometimes it even takes longer for some folks. They got to, they got to get dried out to an extent. They got to get off of the, the, the narcotics or the alcohol or whatever it is that's, that's taking control of them and make them live in that environment. And, um, and and when they do that, then you can get they can get a clear head, they can get an open mind, and they can listen to somebody that's trying to talk to them about yeah. the Lord. And I felt like that we weren't doing, uh, we've had uh, some uh, some Bible studies, and, and our Bible studies with the, with, the, with the ladies seem to be one of the things that really accomplished a lot. Um, just for a note on that, 20 years ago, 23 years ago, when I moved the inmates from the old Lincoln County Jail downtown, the jail's built in 1958, it's, it's gone now, it's been torn down. But when we moved them over, I call it the new jail, of course it's 20, 23 year old. <laughs> um, but when we moved over into that facility, I moved, up, I moved them all personally. And I moved one female into a block of 32. She's a lonely person. She was the last one I moved on the night that I moved them all, starting about midnight one night, just before. And the, what I found the difference between the time then and now when I'm the sheriff is that we've lost some others. A block, block of 32 can't get down below 32. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big, that's one of the biggest changes I've seen morally. You know, and when you, you know, good daddies may have to work two jobs to feed his family. Yeah. And maybe he's not at home. And and he, you got the mother, you got the mother there to do the Bible studies, do the morals, to take care of them, you know, get them to school, do all the things and all the things when they really have to learn so much. But when you lose the mother out of any situation, well, I'm gonna tell you what, it's hard. It's and, and, it, and and I think it's one of the things that that uh, that's changed us in some of the ways that we're going now. You take a mother that's the most doting mother in the world, that she that her child that child is the whole world to her. And she can get on some of this junk that's out here on the street right now, some of this methamphetamine, some of that stuff. She'll kick that kid to the curb. Yeah. And it's all about the dope. And 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 that's an amazing transition in it. And that's hard. But the reason that 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 I feel like so strongly about doing what y'all do so fantastically and, and, and what we've been doing in it there in the jail is that's an opportunity. That's the yeah. time to do it. You're in a you're in a good environment so we can get good people and, and that's when they'll be able to listen to you. And when you go out here and try to minister to some of these folks that's high 
out here in the woods and stuff, you're putting your life in your own hands because they don't really maybe even know or understand what's going on because they can get in a bad state. And, and so I, 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 I hope people wouldn't do that. But if it, it, but in, in our jail situation, I think it's a lot better. Now, some of them, of course, we're all pretrial confinement. Nobody's building, well, there's very few people building sentences. We do have, um, I do hold prisoners for the state that, um, that are finishing out their sentences, but most of them are fairly short term. They'll be in there for a year, 18 months, somewhere along mm -hmm. that at the most. So we're not, we don't have people for long terms. So for pretrial confinement, it's somebody that can't make a bond. And so they may stay and they may stay for years. We've had some, especially in, in murder trials and so forth, that may stay four or five years. Yeah. And so, um, but it's an excellent opportunity for them to, to, to be there, be ministered to, and, and, it, and, and it's just kind of an open book and, and you know, we don't require anybody to do it. We don't. We don't hurt them up or anything. Make yeah. them come in here to your class. It's all voluntary, and and I just felt like the the need to, that that we were missing an opportunity if we didn't get this. Yeah, and you filled the book. I appreciate it. Well, Michelle and uh, Kayla are the first two that went. Right, and uh, you said that Miss Reed is a captain now. She is a captain. Uh, She's she uh, Vita Reed uh, operates the jail. She's a sweet lady. I hired her. She's great. She was an athlete, big athlete in school. And I'm gonna tell you how she got her job. She was an athlete in school. She went and got her a scholarship to four-year college. I forget where it's at. I think it's up in West Virginia. And uh, great basketball player. She's not tenured. Wow. And uh, she, uh, she had her school and paid for So when she graduated from school, she 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 didn't know exactly what to do. She had her education. And, and uh, Franklin Lauer said, I've got a little girl that, that, that that's uh, just graduated from college and said she's, she's looking for a career or something. And I said, well, send her to me. And... Uh, I started her in the Lincoln County Jail. She's been there ever since, and she is now uh, she's uh, the first captain ever in that jail, and the first female uh, uh, jail uh, supervisor, the jail administrator. And uh, and she does a she does a fantastic job. She yeah, really she does. does. She's uh, she, and that's one of the places when the parole sheriff got to make sure he's got a, somebody that's really smart running your jail because <laughs> that's a place where you you can have all kind of problems. Yeah. Well, the first time she took us in. Um, I'll say this: It's the nicest jail I've ever been in. Okay. I know it don't make they sense. They work very, very hard. And if the only jail you've ever been in is mine, you need to no. go visit some others. No, it's not. <laughs> no, I've I've preached in many jails. When I was in Tennessee, I had three jails that I took care of and right. I, I preached at every week. And and a lot of the stories that I have was in Gaston County jails. In my book, it was at Gaston County right. jails. So I've been in Gaston County, Jackson City jails, uh, all these places in Tennessee. And I've never been in a in a place that nice. And I'll tell you something else, too. All of your people, really, and I ain't buttering up. I'm not one of these people that blow smoke up somebody's behind. Right. I don't do that. All of your people, from Janine and them out at the front, right. all the way through, have always been super nice. Super nice. I've got some fantastic. And, and the girls, you know, uh, I took them in the first two weeks right. just to get them acclimated. Right. I, I hadn't had to go back in, and they love it. They go in. They they do no less than two, but they usually have four girls every, every right. night. And we've went from two girls to I think they said eight, seven, eight uh, girls are going all the time. Um, but another another thing is is um, how do you how do you see are there any way we can help them more? You know, because our girls, you know, when when some of these girls get out, we've got girls coming to church now. We've got their families coming to church. We've baptized them. Uh, uh, Michelle, I know Michelle has let at least one or two of them stay with them overnight. Uh, Jenny took one to a rehab the other day, so they're really working. They're not just going in and teaching a Bible study; they're working after they come out. But what's some things great. that we can do? Or... And, and and having that help that, that to me that's the most important is number one you you've got to you've got to get them enlightened. Yeah, you got them get them realize that I don't care what you've done, who you are, that God loves you. Yeah, and once they once they make that realization that you know, hey, I'm 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 I might be worth something. And maybe I can, maybe I can do better. And you give them that hope. Amen. And um, and then and and then when they come out, if they go right back into the same the same environment that they were in before, they're going to go right back and doing the same thing. So I have somebody that 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 has that uh, social pressure of some kind. Oh man, you know you don't want to listen to them or that or whatever else. You need to do this, you know. And uh, that's who you are, and, and and so forth. But they go right back into that environment. So it's it's really important. Um, you know, 
you, you have families, and if you've got somebody that's been in that environment, you know, the best thing you can do if, if they're if they're available to go in the military, get them in the military or get them somewhere, get them away from here. Get them away from the group that they've been in. They've yeah. got to have a new environment and to start a new life, and, and you've got to help them do that, and somebody's got to help them do that. Who you hang around is who you become. That's exactly right, and, and so... Uh, so that's fantastic what your group is doing, and and I know, and and, and I've got one of the girls from my church that's coming over and helping yeah. y'all. She yeah. was, she was, she has got a. If you ever listen to her testimony about about what she's been through, we're going to do a and, podcast with her. And she uh, she did it at our church, and 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 uh, you know, I I just knew just a little bit about things that she had said here and there that she had seen hard times, and and I'm going to tell you what she she really saw some hard times, and she's amazing. And uh, she was grown. Uh, she was raised out in California, and so coming out here, I think, was a, a, a huge help for her and, and able to help her stabilize her life. But she can tell you all that. But anyways, she wanted to, but she felt like she needs to pay it forward, you know, yeah. and come back and, and help some folks. And 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 and, um, and you know, and that's when I want to make sure that I think that's the, the perfect environment to do this. Yeah. And she, it, I think it's pretty awesome because when I was in Tennessee, I had like uh, fifteen different people from different churches that come. Mm-hmm. And so even since Kayla and Michelle has taken this over, we have a couple of different churches that's gotten involved. They've heard about it. Like you, you contacted me about this right. girl where they called her and, and now they're friends now. Excellent. I know that uh, her and Connie have made, you know, really good friends. And so I just think it's awesome. They're all working together because listen, this is a huge problem. And I know that uh, like I'm, I'm one of these crazy people that I get up at three or four o'clock in the morning. You know what I look at? I look at, I look at your sheriff's thing that you you told me how to get on the app. Right. I go in on the app and I look at inmate search. And the one thing that blows me away is the women. Is the women? There's there's almost as many women just about as there are men. And when you go scrolling amazing. through that, that's what you see. And and it's so disheartening because um, a lot of them you can see their picture. You can tell what they've been doing. Oh yeah, and, uh, it, it it is. And 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 like I said, I, I told you that, that, and that was the biggest change I've seen in in twenty years. And it's a huge change. And, 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 you know, the ladies are the foundation of family. Amen. You know, you got to have a good father. You need that. Absolutely. You, you know, you know, single parent homes are, 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 are tough things, but we see a lot of people that, that come all out of those. And, and, uh, you, you know, you meet people today that, that, uh, had, uh, the mother and father was both in jail and now they're a fantastic person, yeah. but you know, that's, to me, that's they they were they really did it the hard way. Yeah. They did it the hard way. Mm-hmm. But it's uh yeah the, the mothers. If you lose your mothers, you, you you lose a lot of the family. Well, a lot of people that's going to watch this um, know you as sheriff, mm-hmm. and they may hear you talking in political realms, but they never mm-hmm. hear like like your heart. Uh, would you share a little bit of your testimony with us? How you how you come to know the Lord and stuff? If you can. Well, you know, uh, I was raised in a Lutheran church in uh, uh, at West Lincoln and. and you know, great background and, and, and studying the Bible and so forth, and and it was a thing that that, that that's come along as uh, I don't I don't have the the flash of lightning yeah. uh, a story to give you, but uh, uh, being in law enforcement and 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 needing the Lord and knowing the Lord and His, you know, once once you get to that place where you know you understand that uh, that He loves me, how much He loves me, He gave His Son's life for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's power. Yeah, that's power. Yeah, that's uh, good stuff. you know, and and you know, and, and I've always felt called in law enforcement, and and there's a reason behind all that, and there's a reason behind it. Who is it? it it's it's our Lord, and, and uh, to try to help these young men come through, to let them know that I'm not ashamed of telling somebody that I'm a Christian, and and you don't need to be ashamed of that either. Amen. That um, you know, and and that you can help people out here, and, and you got to do things for the right reasons, and it all just fits in together with our our law enforcement, and our values, and and the morals that we teach. Yeah, you was talking a little while ago. I know me and me and Anita was like, "Wow, that's awesome." Tell me again about you and Franklin Lauer. Franklin Lauer was a friend of mine. He coached basketball at East Lincoln, and uh, over at Pastor Mike's church, we'd have Bible study or not Bible study, but prayer, and he would come every now and again. So I didn't know him near as good as Mike did. Uh, but but he was always very friendly to me. So tell me tell me well, what Franklin's you guys talking about. A unique individual, and God bless him. But between him losing him and Charlie Green both together, and almost in the same year was was horrible for me. I mean, I, I love Charlie and I love Franklin. Franklin was a master for years and years ago. When I was a very young officer, Franklin was a very young master. Yeah. Like Kenny, he worked in the basement. Of the, and, and, and so when I made arrests, 
And I made a lot of them back in. I, I remember one time I had a carload. I think I had seven one time I was serving warrants, and this is all different charges. But it, but I was just every place I stopped, it, come, on, there. Yeah, come on, get in. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, so I knew Franklin all the time. And, and, and Franklin, uh, I didn't know him as a minister, but I knew him as a Christian. Because he found ways of making sure that he he made remarks or whatever you know to to to, to thank God and, and and do all those things you know and put a little plug that's in. That's right, right, that's right, and, and and a lot of that helped me too. Because I'm gonna tell you what, it's pretty rough back in the mid '70s when you worked Lincoln County, and I I've, I've worked Lincoln County by myself from Northbrook to Denver, be the only police coming. Now I'm gonna tell you a little something. You get in trouble, there ain't nobody coming to help you. And that's one reason I bonded so strong with Charlie Green because, see, Charlie was the only trooper working back in those days. Yeah. And so I'd help Charlie, and Charlie had helped me. And we, we, we took care of each other. Probably the reason we're so, both still here today. And so, um, anyway, Franklin, so I've known Franklin forever. So when I got to be sheriff, before I, before I ran for sheriff, I want to make sure I had support from Franklin. I went by to see him at his church and, and talked to him, but he's always been a friend it's ever since he was a master. And so... Um, We'd talk about things and anything we talked about doing the right thing and so forth. And, and, and so, um, uh, the history on that was, uh, like I said, when I worked for Barbara and, and, and I was chief deputy, I made um, a mission statement and I wrote it. It was a couple paragraphs. When I got to be sheriff, I said, I wrote that mission statement. I think it's even hanging around here and some of the, it, it was still hanging around in the office and I got it and I looked at it and I read it. I said, yep, I wrote every word of that. So I took it down. Why? Because I didn't remember what it said. I had wow. to read it. Yeah. So I said, I made things way too complicated. So I thought back to Harbin, and when I went for Harbin, Harbin said, "Boy, son, you, your job is real simple. You do these things. You you keep you you, you protect life, mm -hmm. protect property, and you keep the peace." Yeah. And so I said, "You know, that's absolutely true today, just like it was then." So when I share, if I started thinking about that, and I said, "I'm going to change this mission statement." Real simple. Well, this is our mission, not so much a mission statement. I want this to be our mission. Yeah. So I said, "Might be some things we need to add because." We've got to be truthful with the people. I want my officers to be truthful with me. Yeah. If they've made a mistake, and we all make them, I made a major mistake. Every time I hard and hard and jump me, hey, boy, uh, you better come over here talk to me. I said, uh-oh, <laughs> out of all the things I've done wrong, which ones do you know about? <laughs> you know, and, and so it's the same thing. You know, we, we got we got to we got to be truthful. I want, I'm going to be truthful with my officers. I want my officers to be truthful with me yeah. and be truthful with the public. And, and, and that's those morals and things that we live by. But anyway, so uh, I added that... Uh, uh, tell the truth, and so, and, and then I've always been one about doing the right thing. So that was the five. I mm -hmm. got my five, and um, so Franklin had uh, saw me, and he said, uh, you know, he said we pray for you every Sunday now, uh, you and you, you, your officers, and I, and I said, well, I really appreciate that. He said, well, I'm gonna stop praying for you if you don't come by and say that. I said, okay, Franklin, you know, he's kidding. So is that so, how I'm gonna get you to church? Hey, yeah, quit praying well, for you. <laughs> <laughs> So and and I've had that to happen several times. I've I've visited a number of churches. I shall I say, but so uh, so I went by one Sunday, me and Deb, and and we were there, and and just so happened that his sermon that Sunday was talking about right, and of course me is do the right thing and, and right and right and right, and he just went through his whole sermon and talked about you know and and, and you know maybe this is the right thing and, and maybe in your opinion somebody else over here this is the right thing you know we get churches sometimes that split up in two different groups well this is the right thing this right. is the right thing well which one of them is righteous right. and so to me when when he, he sat there and ended that up I said that is just that's a message straight to me uh, from Franklin God bless you and thank you I'm glad I was here today and, and that's exactly what I needed to hear and so and, and so I tell my officers when I talk to them, and I, and I try to tell all the new ones that come in, I said, you're going to see this on the wall. You need to know that and understand it because your job's simple. Protect life. What kind of life? All life. Yeah. A college dog that's walking out here in the middle of the road, that's a lie we want to protect up. Right. Uh, protect life. Protect property. Everybody's property. We want to keep the peace. Yeah. Now, what does that mean? That, that can get very entailed, <laughs> but it's still just as simple as everybody wants peace yeah. and to be peaceful. And we want this to be a peaceful place. Keep the peace. Tell the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to expect you to tell me the truth. Yeah. Now, if you've made a mistake, you can learn from that mistake. Only if you tell me the truth about it. Yeah. I've messed up. Yeah. So let's fix this. All right. You know, most things that the Lord, the Lord's fixed me. Mm -hmm. And so well, now we've got to fix each other sometimes. But um, and we do that and tell the truth to start off with, and then doing the right thing. And so it made it real simple. Two, two equations, uh, mm -hmm. 
Is it righteous? Yeah. If it's righteous, then boy, that's the right thing. Yeah. I was telling the chef just a little while ago that basically what he does is kind of similar to what, what a church does. Yes. You know, you got to do the same thing. I tell everybody, I don't say do what's righteous, but that's the truth. I say do what the word says. Yeah. If the word says it, do it. Um, our mission statement, we were sitting over with, I don't think Franklin was there at that time, but it's Pastor Mike, Pastor Tommy, my brother John, a bunch of these guys was over at Covenant. And they were talking about a mission statement. And I didn't know what they was talking about. I was like, what in the world are y'all talking about? And so everybody was talking about um, their mission statement at their church. And when they got to me, I said, I really feel stupid because I don't have a mission statement. <laughs> and uh, Mike said, well, Scott, you do more in the community or, or as much as anybody in this room. So I know you got a mission statement. And Bill, this is the truth before God. Out of my mouth, I said, love those others don't love. Reach those others deem unreachable. Equip the saints to do the work of the gospel and be found faithful when Jesus comes back. Amen. It's come out of my mouth. And so we've lived by that, and we've even got it on our shirts, and it's on and, this and shirt. That's, that, that's and that's great. And you keep it, you. you keep it simple. Yep. And like I say, you know, it, it was it was a it was one of those things that we went through back in the in the nineties uh, when I was going to all these community policing classes. You know, mission statement, mission statement. You know, you need a mission statement to tell everybody who you are and what you are. And we did that. And it was a good mission statement. I ain't yeah. saying it was bad. I wrote it. Yeah. But, and, and put a great deal of thought into it, but you can't remember it. And when you got something that you can't recall, you, you know, then, then it, it's, it's easy to get away from it. But when, and, and everybody's got to see it, hear it, understand it, and, and it be just exactly yeah. like you say. And, and, and that, that's helped me a whole lot in the sheriff's office. And, and since I've been sheriff, I think that's one of the things that I think we, uh, we kind of improve. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, I, I might should ask you this off camera, but I'm going to ask you this on camera. We we need to do a baptism. I think we got some ladies over there. We need to get that horse trough out. And I know <laughs> last time I wasn't involved in that, and I'm mad about well, it. Well, I'm, I'm uh, glad I'll be glad to tell you about that if that's what you're asking me to do. Um, back when COVID hit, you know, we've all I've had to deal with things since I've been sheriff, and I've been since sheriff's office since 1975. Yeah, you I knew sure. what I was getting into. And I've enjoyed it because I knew it and, and knew where I maybe could help and, and so forth. And I've been blessed. And But COVID was something totally different for everybody. Yeah. I mean, they shut down the schools. They shut down businesses. You know, they shut down the courthouse. I mean, you know, this is crazy. And so naturally, I've got people in Raleigh telling me this and that. And so, you know, we're scared to death that I'm going to get COVID into my jail. We're going to kill everybody, oh, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. because it's a confined facility. And, and uh, I'm going to say this before I forget it. You know how many cases of COVID we had in my jail mm -hmm. in the first round? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. One. Because Vita Reed did such an excellent job. We quarantined everybody for 14 days. You came in, we quarantined you for 14 days. Yeah. You know, if good. you got out before the 14 days is up, fine, get out and go on. But, <laughs> you know, but everybody came in. We quarantined them for 18 days. We did a lot of testing and so forth. Did a great yeah. job. But we weren't, we and, and Vita wasn't comfortable with it. You know, we're going to get all of our ministers coming in from the outside, having Sunday services. We had uh, Bible studies going on at that time with the with the ladies, and um, it, it was a different group. But we couldn't have none of that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and I don't want to tell on this guy, but he's a good guy, and we we had a we had a guy that uh, was from a uh, very professional profession. That was in our jail, and he was going to spend some time in there. And, and when I go back through our jail, and, and I try to go on a, on a regular basis daily, so, and, but I don't make it every day. But uh, we've got a dormitory that holds 40 people. And in those 40 people, it's more like a, a college setting or something like that. You know, it's our highest, lowest level of security. Mm -hmm. But you have to have good behavior over there. If, yeah. you, if you show out, you're going to go across the hall, and that's not in that same kind of condition. But anyway... Uh, when I went through there, this man was back there at his, his table, and, and he had his Bible open. Every time I went back, he had his Bible open. I, you know, I, I, I said, you're in the Word. I said, that's fantastic. Yeah. And um, so then after the, about the second or third time, I, I, I talked to him, and I, I saw his Bible open. I said, uh, you know, you've got, a, uh, you've got a responsibility. I said, you're educated. Not only you've got uh, your four years of college, you've got a professional degree. And I took four more years of college, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, you've got tools that these people in here that you're in here spending time with don't have. And I said, you can help them with the Word and help them to understand the Word. 
Yeah. And I said, you got my full permission to do that. He said, I can do that. Oh, absolutely. I <laughs> you know, I said, we've got plenty of Bibles here. I said, if you'll take on that responsibility, I said, you'll be filling a great void right now in the Lincoln County Jail because right. we don't have these ministers in here. And so he got to doing that. And uh, uh, I don't know, probably three weeks, I'd, I'd come back by and I'd see their group meeting, you know, That's and it'd awesome. sometimes it'd be really large and sometimes it'd be smaller. And, and, uh, and so uh, as I went through and, and uh, had some of those guys that talked to me and let us know how much they appreciated it, you know, that they were able to do this learning and he was doing a good job. And, and, uh, and anyway, one day he's in there and he said, I've got, I've got a little problem. I said, what is it? I hit you with that. He said, uh, uh, I've got, I've got a man in here that really wants to be baptized. He's probably not going to get out for a while. He said, he really wants to be baptized. Okay, well, I go to the cowboy church with Harvey Gates over here on the Ponderosa Road in Ponderosa. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm bad off with horses, and uh, I love them. And that's 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 not anything that you can brag about. It, it's uh, the only way you can come out of the horse business with a small fortune is to start out with a very large one. Because, <laughs> yeah. but my children loved it. I raised my children on all, all that stuff. But anyway, so and I'm at the uh, cowboy church, and and we baptize in a horse draw. I knew I had a a, a baptism font that I could uh, um, move from one place to another, and so um, don't you worry about a thing. We'll take care of it. I'll let you know when. So I talked to Harvey and uh, and uh, Mike Vine's friend of mine, and I, I told Mike. I said, Mike, and he Charlie was still with us at that time, and uh, I said, uh, Mike, I want to. Uh, I want you to come help me. I said, we're going to have a baptism over to the county jail. I said, don't advertise this. Don't put it, don't put it on the news or nothing. <laughs> but, um, and our sally port, where is where the vehicles pull into, yeah. and then the, the, the doors roll down. It's a secured area of the jail. But it's, uh, so anyway, Harvey brought the baptismal phone, put it over there. I ain't going to say the water was warm. No. But it was wet. <laughs> and uh, and the water was blessed. And, and uh, so I told Vita, who's a good Christian lady. I told Vita, I said, Vita, I said, uh, we're going to have a bot baptism Thursday morning. I said, it's going to be about 10 o'clock. Sally Port. I said, I've got a group here from, uh, I don't know how many of them wants to get baptized. I know one for sure. And I said, I don't know how many wants to get baptized. It's in the Bible study group. But I said, but you go through the jail. If there's anybody in here that says that they want to be baptized, I said, that's all they've got to say. That's they awesome. want to be baptized. And uh, so uh, Thursday morning, I said, how many we got, Vita? Did you, get, did you get anybody else? You baptized 14. That's awesome. That's 14 awesome. at the Lincoln County Jail. Yeah, that's awesome. And, uh, oh, it was amazing. It was it was just, uh, you know, hallelujah. We uh, we enjoyed it. I sat out there and watched every one of them. And uh, Harvey and Mike helped each other. And and, uh, and uh, it was, it was, uh, that's good. Know, it was a blessing. Yeah. When I was in Tennessee, there was a, a little, we called it a podunk jail. You've heard yeah. of it. Podunk oh, yeah. jail. Uh, in Mclemoresville, and Jeff Ball was a friend of mine. He's a country boy, and we had a bunch of guys need to get baptized. And he he was actually in the jail at one time. One of the meanest guys they had got right. saved, and he called them and told them what he wanted to do. And they let us do the same thing. We took an old horse trough out there. That water was freezing. Them boys come up. <laughs> they either had the spirit of the judge one. <laughs> And uh, uh, it was freezing. So, so we've done that. Uh, we've, d we've done it before, and it's awesome. But, uh, but really, you know, I just want to thank you personally for everything you've done oh, because yes, I know you don't want to take credit and everything, but if you didn't allow people to come in that jail, they wouldn't be able to come in. And so uh, that, it starts with you. It starts with the leader. And I appreciate you. I appreciate well, everything you. you've thank done you up so there. Much. And uh, I appreciate you coming. I'm trying to think of anything else, but uh, we're going to close it out. Maybe we'll get him to come back later with some more success stories. Maybe we'll get to do that baptism sometime. Um, but anyway, if you would, after you watch this, like and share uh, so we can get the word out. Uh, one, one more thing. If you've got some parents, if you wanted to talk to the parents that's got some people in your jail right now, what kind of hope can you give, give them? Uh, you know, um, Everybody's redeemable. God proved that by sending his only son to the cross. And they might be at the bottom of the pit. And sometimes it takes that for them. Um, you can't help your child out until you can get them to believe in something. And if they can believe in this forgiveness, that's a great place to start. Now, if you want to do something simple, 
don't let them smoke cigarettes. I don't know why it is, but 90% of the people that overdose on drugs and get hooked to drugs are smokers. Yeah. And, and so if you can kind of keep them off of that early, I think it would help. Now, I, I, that's not a proven fact, but I'm saying it's 90, 95% of them. Uh, and they quit smoking when they come to jail. I hate to tell you, they quit right then. So you can get them to quit. Now, we can prove that. Um, but but there's hope. Yeah. But they, it, you, you got to keep the word in, from them, in front of them. But you can't help them until they make that decision that they're going to help. If, as long as they are, you know, and, and that's where the tough love has to come in. Sometimes you can't enable them just on and on and on and on because yeah. that's where a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, uh, overdoses take place and so forth uh and and that's and that's hard and and we we're gonna we're gonna treat when they're in our jail don't worry about them you call me if you worried to, and i do it all the time i get mamas or something call me you know and he's calling them telling y'all beating on him everything and, and, and he ain't feeding him nothing but slop and all this other stuff and it's the nicest place in the world that ain't true come on down here and i'll show you but uh we 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 feed good meals uh, and that's I've changed our food service because I want to make sure that I, that is not a meal that we don't serve in Lake County Jail. That I wouldn't sit down and eat. Amen. And and there's there's two looks that you can say, well, this is all a bunch of bad people, and you need to treat them like that, or you can treat them like humans. Amen. Because if 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 we don't treat them like humans, humans who is and 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 they got good mamas and daddies or good grandmas, and 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 if I'm feeding them bad and they can't eat what I'm feeding them at the jail, then they're going to have to try to get on them and get me commissary money so I can eat the crackers and drink drinks and stuff like that because I can't eat the meals yeah. you got. And um, so there's hope for everybody. And there's hope for your child. And, and it's just, you know, uh, God loves, they they got to understand even that God loves them right where they are right now. Yeah. Even though that they're yeah. in the deepest pit in the world and they're an awful bad person, they're stealing, they're taking their parents' money because that's where it starts out. They start writing checks on mom and daddy and they start dealing stuff at the house when they get on these drugs. And mm -hmm. and he loves them even when they're doing that. Now, they can't get to heaven right then. Yeah, that's right. But he still loves them. Where they are, as they are, he loves them and they're redeemable. And uh, I'm just saying, uh, have faith and have hope. Uh, there's a lot of people that come back out of this mess. Amen. They really, really, really do. They, I, I've seen a lot of people. And sometimes it, it's so hard. I'll have people that have told me that it might take them a month or two being off of the drugs when they're in jail before they can start having a lucid yep. thought about something else but, uh, instead of having that thought about taking the dope first. Yeah, that's true. Until they can just start having mm -hmm. a lucid thought thinking about something else instead of just about themselves and about the dope. Uh, they do some horrible things. Um, my jail nurses, and they're, they're fine ladies, and, and but they'll let me know I talk when I talk to them. If, if somebody thinks they die, and they'll tell you kind of what they're doing. And and people are even getting so bad of shape. You can take a metal screen that goes over your windows. Mm -hmm. and you can buy a black flag wall spray. And they'll fill it up with that foam. Let it dry, and then take jumper cables, country boy. Now take the negative and the positive, hook it to the battery, and then come on the other end and go ahead and ground it, and you just arc it across that metal screen, and it turn into crystals uh -huh. and fall down. And see, this is. Methamphetamines is the same type of stuff. There's not a there's not a natural chemical in it. When cocaine was the king, at least you had to have the coca mm -hmm. leaf from down in Brazil or whatever. And uh, and the marijuana's got plants that's got to be grown. But this this methamphetamine, the the Hispanic uh, cartels make it out of fifty five gallon drums. They just order all this terrible stuff that eat the teeth plumb out of your head, and that happens a lot. Yeah, you see. I've seen. And you see empty lighters sitting around. When you open up a car door and there's five lighters laying in the floorboards and they're all empty. Something's going on here. But there's hope. There's hope for everybody. Amen. And 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 the Lord gives us this hope. And, and please, 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 you got to put the word out there in front of them. Let them know that they've got value. And that's awesome because Jesus said in Matthew 25, 31 through 46, that we went into them when they was in prison. And he said, when you do that, you're coming to see me. So what you guys are doing, allowing us to come in, allow the girls to come right. in, you're, you're allowing that to take place. And uh, so anyway, I love you, brother. And I appreciate you. Yes, sir. And thank you so much. Please like and share and uh, support your sheriff. He's a, I believe with all my heart, he's a good man. I was going to say this right quick. 
um, I got a couple guys. Well, one that especially comes to my church that, that works for you and stuff. And um, I, I honestly, personally, have never heard a bad word about you. Every one of them guys respect you, and and that's the truth. I ain't just blowing you blowing your horn. Every one of them guys that respect you, and every one of them that I've talked to said you do what you say you do. So anyway, God bless you guys. Pray for your sheriff, and uh, please like and share and send this off so some people can get some hope. Amen. God bless you. Love you.